Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, I'm going to talk about something that might be a little bit controversial. Do you need a home lab for your CCIE? This has been a topic that's raged on for years and I've actually changed my opinion a little bit on it over the years. So I'm gonna share with you some things. We're gonna take a look at the blueprint and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll feel good about whether or not you need to build out that lab or how you're gonna build it out. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Now let's jump right into it. All right, so when we talk about specifically the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure Certification, now ultimately the topic is route switch. This is the old route switch exam when I took it. Now let's jump into it. Let's go down here. Let's go actually check out the lab. We're not worried about the written. It's pretty simple. Read a lot of books. Um, now when we get to the lab though, there, here's a list of the topics. Now let's go through this. So first we have network infrastructure, which, you know, if you go through here, we have VLAN technologies, ether channel, spanning tree. This is all layer two stuff. Uh, we get down here, we have routing. Now the interesting thing, so layer two for me, I've always preferred physical devices. For routing, we can do all of that virtually. So, and, and we can do a lot of the layer two stuff virtually to some degree, but um, routing is really, really easy to do virtually. So I've always been a fan of that. We have EIGRP, OSPF version two and three. Again, I, I've done lots um, in like GNS three or uh, with iOS V, that kind of thing. Um, again, BGP, you know, nothing really crazy there. Uh, we get into SD access. So we have some of the underlay stuff like Lisp and VXLAN and TrustSec. Um, you know, a lot of this too, we have Cisco ICE and, and of course the SD-WAN stuff as well. And most of the SD-WAN stuff is virtual anyway. We have, um, you know, V edges and stuff like that that we can deploy. Now, if we continue down, we have uh, MPLS DMVPN again. I did all of those virtualized when I was studying. Um, now we go down here, network security. This is all, uh, again, well, you know, storm control, VLAN access control list, uh, 802.1x with ICE, stuff like that. Um, quality of service, that's a big one. Layer three quality of service, really, really easy to do um, in a you know virtualized environment. Layer two, a little bit harder in my opinion. I'm just not a fan of it. All right, so that said, you know, I, I kind of blazed through here, but let's get to it. So what do I think as far as lab? What's my opinion after getting two CCIEs? I personally feel like the older version of the lab, you needed an absolute, you need a lab in your, your office, room, whatever the case is, you need one. You need physical hardware. In the newer version, you know, in the enterprise infrastructure, and, and I say newer, it's been around a while, but I'm old. In the newer version, I think you can get away with it in, completely in software, but I, there's a caveat here. So I'm gonna say it depends on your personality. So if you're the kind of person that likes to tinker and doesn't mind tinkering around with software in different versions and getting things to work, then yeah, absolutely do it all virtualized. Get a server with a bunch of RAM, deploy everything I just described with you know iOS V, and you've you've got a lab. You can do your uh, virtual SD-WAN edges and stuff like that all in software. There you go, you're good. Now for me personally, the reason that I say if you are not the type of person that likes to tinker, you just wanna get right to studying and spend your time on your lab, you should get a physical lab for as much as you can. Now it's not realistic to deploy that whole blueprint in hardware. I think these days it's gotten very, very expensive to do that, but you can do that. So I guess just sharing my personal opinion on it, when I was studying for my CCIEs for both the data center and the route switch or now enterprise infrastructure, the reason that I was you know, really a big fan of hardware was that I had limited time. I had children at home, I'm married, I, you know, I have obligations, I have work, right? So I didn't have a lot of time to play around with getting different versions of software working. So I wanted to just kind of be able to flip a switch literally and have my lab come up and console in and get started learning. That was kind of my thought process. And it worked out really well because I passed my route switch and data center on the first try. Now, I guess to be fair, I was doing that stuff in my day job, but the point is, it did work really well for me. So I guess the takeaway from this video is if you are really into tinkering and you don't mind you know, playing with software and getting things to work, then yes, do it all in software for your CCIE. You will be successful, it'll be great. If you're not, get a physical lab. The last thing I'll add is that, you know, if you are into traveling a lot, so at the time when I was studying, I was traveling a lot for work. I actually did a hybrid. So I mentioned before I did a lot of stuff in software. What I meant was that when I was on the road, 
I would use GNS3 to practice all of my routing. So I would do real heavy routing practice, filtering, DGP, that sort of thing. And when I was at home, I would focus more on layer two because I had physical switches. So there's definitely a compromise you can reach there. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful and I hope you guys go for it, get your CCIE. Let me know in the comments when you're taking the test. I definitely wanna know how that goes. That said, until next time, stay nerdy.